Um, I mean, for Optum, or at Optum, um, I have been involved with the since 2021, kind of sparingly since I, I in 2021, I was in their mentorship program, like uh, Brittany mentioned earlier. Um, it's like a six week program, I believe. And then, um, yeah, that I've been connecting with Optum, so I've been there since. Uh, so it's a little bit about me. Um, today we're doing an intro to Figma variables. Um, everybody familiar with with variables, like the concept of variables. Maybe have familiar with this Okay. And like even from a development standpoint, variables, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty similar. Like basically, design systems, um, or like Figma has borrowed the concept of like variables to make design system management um, easier, quicker, more efficient. Um, so we're going to do an intro to Figma variables, and then we're going to demo light and dark mode so that it makes a little more sense to why it's useful. Um, so, so what are variables? Um, so from a development standpoint, like it's kind of like a, var a variable is a stored value, right? So a variable could be a stored value, it can vary to different values. Um, so here, this is the value, right? So a value can be, it can be a color, a number, a string, or a boolean. Um, so you would store the value into some kind of name. So the ver that name is the variable. Sorry. What's the name of the name? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's like in the most basic sense, a variable is just a stored value. So it can be stored as a hex code for color. You would use it for fill colors, stroke colors, um, maybe shadow effects. Numbers would be stored as a numeric. That would be for spacing, um, like spacing in a button on the, on the sides or dimensions, corner radius, um, auto layout properties. Um, it can be used in a lot of different ways. Strings can be stored are stored as text. Uh, it's can be used for text layers and variant properties. And then booleans, like true or false values, can be used for something like layer visibility. So you can be um, turned on or off. So those are just some of the types of values that can be stored into a variable in Sigma. Um, so we understand a variable is a stored value. And the usefulness of the variable comes from its ability to reference. So that's what's happening here. So if you guys ever heard of the word like alias, like I'm using an alias, it's like a fake name basically. Um, so we're giving this hex value the name white. So it's being aliased as white. So aliasing is using a name to refer to a specified value or to another name. So the really important part here is to another name. So that means that a variable can refer to a value or to another variable. And that's where all of like the cool stuff about variables um, comes into play. So, so basically we're saying, one way to say it is we are referring to the hex code value as the alias white, or we can say we are storing the hex code value in the variable white. Those are just two kind of two different ways of thinking about it. Um, and then in, uh, another thing about aliasing, um, like I said, it uh, you can store a variable into a variable, so that allows for multi-tier <clears throat> multi-tier naming system. Um, so aliasing makes variables a powerful tool for quicker updates for designs and more efficient management of design systems. So we're going to see how that comes into play. Um, so when we're talking about these tiers, we said that that variable, this variable can refer to another variable, right? So in the common practice or like in uh, the conventional way of kind of using these var variables to refer to other variables is having um, I guess in this scenario, two types of variables, right? So we have um, the primitives, which is tier one, and then we have tokens, which is tier two. So primitives is at the naming convention here. 
um, is as generic as possible. So it's just called white. For tokens, it has a semantic meaning and semantic means it has a meaning, it has a purpose. And that purpose is showing you how and where that token is going to be used. So here we have background default. That means this token is used on background, on the background and for default backgrounds um, or like primary backgrounds. Um, so I think I accidentally skipped this, but for primitives, primitives define every value in the system. So they're defining um, kind of the most basic value. They're defining them and then they are referenced by the tokens. They're never applied directly to the design. Only the second tier, the tokens are applied to designs. Um, so, okay, so just to reiterate that, primitives refer to values, tokens refer to primitives, and tokens can be applied to the design, but primitives are not applied to the design, it's only tokens. Do you have any questions for, I think? It'll make more sense when you look at the demo, but yeah. Uh, so BG default uh, essentially holds white. Is it holding like a pointer to white or is it holding a pointer to the value? So like if you were to update white, would that update BG default? Yeah, so it's anything that happens to white is going to be stored in BG default, so it is pointing. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a call out. Can there be more than two tiers? I know that I defined a system here where there's two tiers, but there can actually be more than two tiers because variables can limitlessly just refer to other variables, right? So you could have this line chain can just keep going and going and going. Not ideal, but there are there's a scenario um, for enterprise level design systems where they have multiple like product products that they're working on in, in one ecosystem. And they may benefit from a tier three by creating variables at a component level. We're not doing that today, but just for your awareness, that is possible and it is used and it is useful. Um, for some design systems. So variables can always reference other variables. So technically there is no limit to the number of tiers or level of referencing. So this chain can just keep going and going as long as it's useful to the design system. Um, so just to reiter reiterate, variables can be referenced lim limitlessly and applied limitlessly. This allows design system teams to maintain a reliable source of truth for consistency. Nayeli kind of like went through this in the morning. Um, and then it can also improve management of scaling design systems for faster and more efficient updates to design and design systems. So uh, Nayeli did kind of walk through this a little bit, but we're gonna kind of do a double click into like what this actually looks like. Um, and variables in context, variables support managing design systems across components. It also supports modes, so light and dark mode, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. Um, spacing modes, so if you want to create different device sizes or versions for your product, you don't have to create those different versions. You just create the tokens and you can just by one click or two clicks, um, you can just switch it to a different device size. Um, and then localizing language, you can actually also um, with the string variables, you can switch between different languages to see if they fit in the right size for a design. Um, and then interactive prototypes. It's actually really cool to think you can do as variables in Figma um, for interactive prototypes, but we're not going to get into that right now. Um, so another call out is styles versus variables. There's um, like styles in Figma at least. Um, they are, they can't reference other styles. So the similarity between the two to, is that both can be assigned to various design attributes like color, numbers, and strings, but there's no referencing power for styles. And variables can only store single values, while styles can store sets of values for gradients and shadows. So there's still value in using styles. Um, like it can support color gradients while vari variables cannot. Variables are useful because they can do the referencing. 
Um, okay, any other questions before we get into the demo? Mm -hmm. um, so why would you, you said you never would apply um, the tier one, so like the white variable to an element in the design. Um, did you have to it? But like, why exactly do you need that third tier? Like what's the yeah. benefit of that? That's a really good question. I think <laughs> like usually that's the question until you see it um, applied, but just to give you like a brief explanation, let's say we have like a white, background, a white input, um, and maybe a white button. I don't know, maybe there would be a white button. Um, so let's say we want to change the color of the button, but not the background. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, we would have to like separately go into each, like go into the button and then make that change, rather than maybe if we had something like a third level, we could have even more like a fine tooth comb into what we're changing across the design. So then you could change it for the button or you could change it for the background or you could change it for surfaces rather than um, like, accent, like, like accent yeah. colors. Or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So like if you wanted to change surfaces rather than um, order, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to change like an entire you would have to go there individually and like change it for each company, like um like property. Like you could make it even individual by properties, but you can kind of um have more like fine tooth comb into what you're changing rather than that like one color. Um does that make sense? It, it'll make more sense when we look into the file. But yeah, definitely I think it, question. this time I think that design is like, well, if I wanted to change it from white to like blue, mm -hmm. then BG I have to change the BG default to 22. I'll get it and then <laughs> Yeah, just imagine this diagram, I guess, with okay, BG default here. And then let's say there's also like um border, like divider border or something. So now that there's two things that this white is pointing to, what if I wanted to change? Let's just say these this token didn't exist here. I applied white to all the borders. I applied white to all the surfaces. Mm -hmm. Now there's no way for me to change just the borders and not the surfaces unless I have to go in there manually to it. So this is the more efficient way because there's more like divvying up in between um, where I'm applying the actual tokens. So the white has no semantic value, right? And then the tokens have semantic value. So you're actually changing where and how it's used. So you're kind of like zooming into where and how it's used rather than just changing something arbitrary like the color white, right? if that makes sense. But it'll it'll definitely, if it doesn't make sense by the end of the demo, feel free to ask again. Um, okay. uh, so everyone has access to uh, any other questions? Okay, so if you guys could open this file and um, duplicate, duplicate it. And then go into the local variables. If you can access one. Oh, oh right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, keep um, okay, so you go to this drop down here. Right. Yeah, there's a drop down here on the title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you go to duplicate. And then there should be another file that opens up and says uh, the name of the file and copy. <laughs> okay. So in Figma, just like a basic rundown, um, the top here is where we can access things like the pointer. Uh, frames, shapes, the pen tool. Um, there are other things 
under here, but um, I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, text, um, resources like plugins and stuff. Um, you can use the hand tool to like drag around. Comments. Um, that's kind of like what this bar does up here. You can share your file. There is a dev mode, which is pretty interesting if you guys have a chance to ask your mentors. Um, and then this is like, do you want to play a prototype? This, this side here is going to be important for us. This is where you access your variables and where we're going to be applying properties to the things that we're selecting in the main workspace, which is here. Um, you can zoom out and zoom in. Um, this side has the layers and the assets. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the layers here. You can also look at the pages, um, different pages here. And when you click into the pages, you can see the different layers that are in the file. It's just a very, very rough rundown of Figma. Um, okay. So, are you guys able to see local variables here? You have to be not clicking anything in the workspace for it to show up. So, for example, if I click here, it doesn't. It's not there anymore. So you have to be clicking it out, but clicking nothing. And then you'll see local variables. Cool. Okay. Do you guys see light mode and dark mode? Are you guys seeing um oh, just like an empty that says create reusable numbers? Okay, that's that's okay. That's okay. Um just a kind of like you have any constructed or constructed. Yeah, so you have to make sure you're not selecting anything. Okay. And then you'll see yeah. local variables here. Yes. This is where um, hypothetically the variables can be released, but that's okay if they're not there. See, I see it. Sorry. Uh, so, so, did you have some screen that you're on my own variables? Yes, 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 Okay, so I wouldn't do the magic code because that's why I think it's the default in the top left. Oh, so you see it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, so you guys can see the square? Yeah, but oh, it's different variables for us. Yeah, yeah. I see both. Oh, okay. That's what you're doing. Oh, okay. That's scary for a second, but that's great. Okay. So, everybody has seen this? Just follow that top left. Is anybody not seeing this? All right, so if you're looking at the default, which I'm assuming you guys are seeing primitives, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so this is the first tier of variables, right? So these are going to be just like the name that's pointing to the value or the value that's pointing to it. This is the first level, not semantic, not telling you how or where it's used, just giving it some like arbitrary name to a certain extent. Um, so these are actually grouped by neutral and brand. Um, and if you click up here, where it says primitives global, what are the like 10, 20, 30 that? Good question, yeah. These are actually, usually they're um, labeled by how much black is in the color. So if it's darker, mm -hmm. um, it'll be at a different level. Mm -hmm. um, here, I just kind of, it is kind of the same. It is going based on which one's darker, but it's not the same like amount or, I just did it based on like the, like lighter versus darker, but that's usually how it's used. Um, same thing with like blue. So you do this and then you don't have to deal with the X numbers, you can just call it very poorly. Exactly. Exactly. And it gets even more useful like when you get to the semantic variables. Okay. 
So any other questions? Okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> It's a pop quiz, but like more of a question. Why why is there a brand in a neutral category, do you think? Like what do you design systems try to do with that? Like a color style usually, right, would need your grade that goes on the border color, on the that's try to find out why there's like categories of a brand and neutral and where, where they use it. Why do you think they usually use the brand? Mm -hmm. For call to action. The headers or the, the brand ones, right? Mm -hmm. You see a lot of like, okay, I get one blue. But what about the light blue? For the secondary? Yeah, the blue tab. Maybe for active situations. Okay. When you're active online. things. Or for which one? What component? Button. Okay. Have some experience with this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all possible. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's let I'll let her out to continue, but that's my I'm thinking about it a little bit more. Think, what? Yeah, oh, master of one. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You have to get to the end of that. Yeah, that's a great point. Um. Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for how they're used. Um, okay, so so if you guys go up to the top left and drop down, you'll see semantic tokens. Click into, click into that, and now you have a different list of variables, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Okay, so which tier is this? Two. two. Tier two, right? So tier two, they're not arbitrary names, but they're So the name of this token is actually, does anyone want to take it Default. Oh, you see it next to you. Yeah. That default. Um, so actually, like when you put it into here, it's actually forward slash when you add it here in groups, but we'll do that together. Uh, but I just want to show you guys this first. So there's the background color, the colors here. So there's a default, subtle, there's content, colors, default, strong. Where do you think um, background colors are used? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What about icons? Then, mm. Mm. question mark. Icons, pictures. Maybe content. Yeah, you can use it. Sometimes when you create an alert component, the text and the icon is one color, right? Okay. So in the in our demo here. Um, and then border, <laughs> okay, cool. So what I want you guys to do is to actually go in here and yeah. Uh, so it is likely that no context then at the top. It's what? Is that context? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, context. So um since you guys have a free account you're not going to be able to create the dark mode but you get to play with it in the original file not in the copy which we're we're going to delete all of these so we can like create them together but yeah so you're like the token can store this value or this value based on the contents or yeah okay so end game end game we're trying to Create two modes. So white, uh, sorry, light and dark mode. And I hope that um, it's not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. So I have to go back to here. 
Okay, I mapped it in my own file because I didn't want you guys to cheat. Mm -hmm. um, so should we map this one? Yeah. So should be yeah. So you, so you see how easy that was? Mm -hmm. That's it. Like once you have the variables. Um, like the tokens, the tier two tokens, you can just switch modes like this, as opposed to just have in, as opposed to having two different designs and then manually having to go change everything. So that's kind of easy. That was that. Is that one of the windows like a page on links and that page or what is this? This one is like my original file where I was like working on it and we had to like move things around so you guys could access things. Oh, okay. um, but I can link this to like into the that file if you guys want after the weekend. Sure. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Just look at it. I was thinking about it and I'm like, should I just oh, go into this? Something we can reference. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's different in the I think in them it's going to be faster, but for designers, whoever's in the designer and designer in the room, we might be able to help in a, an offline session get you up to speed with Figma. Figma is kind of limiting because of the membership. Yeah. Okay, so this is the copy thing. So, what I want you guys to do is to go into the local variables, go over here, and delete the one. All of your. <laughs> and, uh, I want to go. <laughs> okay, try the so only is it primitives or semantic? What are they doing? Both. I, mean, I think try just the semantic. They can fill it with. Oh, you want to get the primitives on? Yeah, right. And that was going to have them do. No, no, no. Change it. So I wasn't going to do everything. I was going to have them only do it for the room. Oh, for the room. So that's it. They can see. Okay. So we can know how to make it. Is this from the community? Yeah, I just did. If it's from the community. So make sure you're working in your copy, okay? Not that you're going to always get it online. Uh, you're in the box, right? Yeah. yeah. So delete the primitives. Oh, you're gonna delete the semantics and also delete the primitives. Okay, so you see that we're only making like um a couple of variables. Uh, so don't freak out. Did you delete the primitives? Yeah, everything. Actually, maybe we have things. Okay, so I want you to rename your collection here primitives. I want you to go here and then create uh, actually no, just leave it like this. Um so once you do that, you rename it primitives. I want you to go to practice A. practice okay. going. Yes, a practice button. So what we're going to be doing is taking this button or tile um, and applying, creating tokens for it and applying. So we're going to be creating the primitives. We're going to be ma mapping them onto semantic tokens. So that's tier one to tier two. And then we're going to be applying them to this uh, button. Okay. Mm -hmm. So step one, create your primitives. We already created the collection, right? So now we want to create gray 40, gray 30, and white. I want you to reference the values that are here. So gray 40, gray 30, and white. So go into variables. Let me know if I'm going to between the end point. I'm going to create a variable. It's going to be a color variable. These are primitives, so they're going to be mapping to a hex code. And I want the first one to be gray 40. And the hex code I see for gray 40 is 3331. 
Okay, so now is everybody good? Can you come here? Oh, uh, six. Yeah, only six. Yeah. Okay. So I want you guys to go ahead and do the same thing for grade thirty and what? Okay. <laughs> white is going to be easy for the two folks too. No, just the, the ones that are here. Grade 40, grade 30. Step two, we're going to create the semantic variables by mapping them to the primitives we just created. Okay, so I'm going to open that up. And we're creating right now two, um, two semantic variables. So let's go here to this left corner, create a collection. I want to name it semantic variables. I'm going to create my first one, which is BG default. I'm going to type BG. This is color, right? Yes. Uh, color. BG forward slash. I want you guys to like notice what the forward slash does. Forward slash default. Okay. So look what happens. Wow. Forward clock makes me do the group. Wow. Um, that didn't I was like, you do that? So, <laughs> uh, like, messaging. Um, so, also, the most big thing I've done is it also, is it like recommended to? Uh, I think, like, if you can find a new course, you can pull for managing your system. What if I was like, yeah, so it'll come out like that. And then you'll see button and then it's nested. Oh, no, that was successful. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to 
Okay, so now that you created that one, we're gonna is this correct? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, because what needs to be good. Okay, so what should this say? So the way that we're going to get that um, primitive is we're going to click on it. We're going to go to library. Uh, we're going to click on the value. Yeah, that's where. I'm going to go to libraries and we're going to select the prim we're going to see primitives. Select mm -hmm. like white. And now this is correct. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, you guys, I want you guys to do the same thing with the content people. So content is the group, and then the token is the content people. If you want to know what this one is, so the proposed page, you can look down here. Okay. Cool. So now that we have that, everybody has that. Good. Now we've created the primitive. We've mapped them to semantic variables, but now we have to apply them to the actual design so that they work, right? So this is the, the design that we're going to apply it to right now. This is not supposed to say that. So I want you to actually break it. So there's like this break symbol here, detach variable. Mm -hmm. I want you to click that. Uh, uh, this like, Broken link. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so if you guys broke that, there's also other selection colors. I want you to break the content. It's our, it's mapped to variables, but it's mapped to variables that are not in this file. So it's not so let's do this. Okay, so the fill is this hex code, right? Mm -hmm. So if I want to make this so that it has tokens for its back, which token am I going to have? Amazing. So the way that I do that is I press this four dot icon mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to. Am I going to go here? No. I'll go here. Yeah. A lot of this is like a common mistake. I even do this sometimes, like applying the primitives to designs. Um, so make sure you go to semantic variables and press default. There's actually a way to scope, like it's called scoping. You can you can uh, define where the prim like certain um, variables will show. So you can actually scope the primitive so that it doesn't show here at all. Um, and then for other teams, you can actually also scope semantic variables so you can't use it in certain team contexts. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on a federated team, so like everybody's using everything wrong. So we're actually like switching to sigma variables this year. 
Okay, so once you have that, that's great. So I, I want you to look at the layers. It's called tiles. Mm -hmm. That's what the component's called. I want you to open it up. On the left side, there's a page. It's called a layer. Mm -hmm. That's where all of the things that live in the workspace are organized. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you see, you'll see a text layer underneath next to the layer. And an arrow right, that's the icon. So if you click shift, you can do it individually, but if you want to do it by the same time, and you click shift and select the second one, you can select them both at the same time. And you can make the fill. What am I going to make the fill? Content default, right? It's text, an icon, that's content, and it's default information. So I'm going to make this content default. And that is not right. Uh, yeah, go to selection colors in Facebook. <laughs> selection colors. That's good. So make sure you do it in selection colors because fill is actually going to fill this whole box yeah. rather than the icon. Yeah. One selection color. You can do them one at a time if you're having trouble with selection. So you can go to this one, selection colors, increase contact people. You can click on the next one to do contact people. Okay, once you do that, your tile has, has tokens now. <laughs> so this would be done across a whole page like this. Um, you guys don't have a page now, so you can't make modes, but where the modes would happen is here. So you can click here. And I can't do it here because um, it's not in the right folder. But it would look like in, if you go back to the original file, you saw the modes here, right? So not in, there, there are actually no modes in primitives. The modes have to happen in human. The modes are here. And since you guys have already mapped the tokens, which I hope this is, Right. Is something cool? I hope it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Whoa. 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 Yeah, so the reason why it's doing that is because it's actually on um, this this whole frame is on uh, auto. So if I change it to life mode, um, oh, I apologize. This is on light mode, and then the component is on auto. So if I actually change it to light mode, it wouldn't change. Oh. But since it's on auto, it it will take the mode of the parent. <laughs> so that's why it's changing like that. Does that make sense? It's good for yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, you're talking about like you know, for mine's just staying like it's not. Like that. Okay, select your select this. Does it say um does it does it have a token bonus? Uh if you guys are oh wait. If you if you didn't find this tedious and you have like thirty minutes that you want to go on the back, like you could like you could like, like, you can, like, you can, like you can practice adding tokens to this whole page. 
Because that's how the most would happen, but if you don't have a big pot, can't use it. Can you do it? I yeah, so I just, I want to, I think that I just missed you. So, uh, that, yeah, that was big. I need to go to Oh, actually, let me go through that one once Let me probably do my Oh, okay. Um, so, most of you guys are developers, something old. Is, um, there's actually a plugin called Design Token Manager. Uh, we actually um, it's not the whole office of Yeah, we, we uh, no, we don't use we didn't use the uh, Design Token Manager here. We use um no no um file dictionary. Oh yeah, okay. uh, with um Token Studio. Oh okay. Yeah, so, so we I, I think the style token manager is uh the paid version there's like a like a pro version oh. yeah so we didn't we didn't want to pay an extra for it <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm going to show you guys something with uh uh design token manager there are like a bunch of plugins that can or like at least two that we know of that yeah. you can pull the uh variable information from here and pull it into actual like json files um, so you can just copy and paste it. I think you guys are hard coding. I okay. know. Uh, we're Wait, actually like uh, doing automated. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we, we have mostly like primitive tokens, yeah. uh, but we haven't gone to doing the semantic ones yet. We did one. We we for semantic. We have semantic one, but yeah, we but don't no. have the one with QA three. 